morning to everyone. Hope that you've had a good night's sleep and um, are ready to enjoy meditating with the collective this morning. Dreshamataji. First of all, let us all bow down to Srimadaji, raise our Kundalini and put on a bandhan and let us invite her into our hearts so that we are able to go into a beautiful meditation. Dreshamataji. Let us begin our meditation by putting attention on our Muladhara and I'll play Sri Ganesha Tavasesha. Sri Ganesh Atharva Sivcha. Chandra Mastra 
I thought we'd listen to a bhajan this morning to help us put our attention on our chakras, a queen of universe. Oh, Queen of 
दिवस ओ क्वीन ऑफ युनिवर्स ओ शक्ति ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा Attention in our heart, raised up to Sarastrara. Let us listen to Sri Krishna Puja talk, Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the place of angels. This was from 1983, the 18th of September. First time when I came to United States, I came to Los Angeles first. 
because it's a place of angels. Actually, I thought that it must be a very holy place to come down. First of all, in this uh, great land of United States. Now, as you know that United States or America, the whole of it, is the Vishuddhi Chakra. Out of which we have three sides to the Vishuddhi Chakra. So the central part of the Vishuddhi Chakra is United States. The central part of the Vishuddhi Chakra is governed by Sri Krishna and his power is Radha. Radha, Ra means energy, Dha is the one who has sustained the energy. Ra, Dha, Dharaiti, Sa. So she is the one who has sustained the energy and so she is called as Radha. She is the power of Shri Krishna. The word Krishna comes from the word Krishi, means the ploughing, or you can say agriculture is called as Krishi. The one who ploughs and puts the seed in the soil is doing the Krishi, and that's why it's called as Krishna. Now the seed that he has sown is the seed of spirituality. It is Sri Krishna who said in Sanskrit, Nainam Chidanti Shastrani, Nainam Dahati Pavaka, Na Chainam Kledayantyapo, Na Shosatayi, Shoshayati Maruta. Meaning, it cannot be. Means the spiritual life, or you can say the eternal life, or the spirit, cannot be killed by anything, by any weapon. Neither can be blown away by air, nor can it be sucked in, nor can it be destroyed. So to prove that, Christ came on this earth and through his resurrection he proved what Sri Krishna had said. And most of you Sahaja Yogis know the relationship of Christ and Sri Krishna, why he was called Christ. Christ was comes from the same Krishna. And his first name comes from the word Yashoda. Yashoda is also called as Jesu or Yesu, and that's why Christ was called as Jesu or Yesu. Some people call him Yesu and some people call him as Jesu because of Yashoda, the mother, foster mother of Sri Krishna. Also, you know that Radha was the same as Mahalakshmi, so she was the same as the mother of Christ, maybe. <coughs> these, all these things we can prove it in Sahaja Yoga, because when the Kundalini moves up to the Vishuddhi Chakra, and if it stops there, you can ask the question, was Krishna the son of Mother Mary, or was Jesus the son of Mother Mary? was the son of Radha, was the same as Radha <coughs> and then the Kundalini was. So Sahaja Yoga today is a thing which proves what has been said so far. It proves. It's not just a cock and bull story because people do not believe into all these things. They think that it's all cock and bull story. Who was Christ? Who was Krishna? Who was Radha? After all, there was no God. But only in Sahaja Yoga, today, we can prove it, that what we say is the truth. Because as through realization, you get connected to the mains, your vibration starts flowing, like the computer, you start working. And whatever question you ask, answer comes to you as tremendous vibrations, or it stops, or you might get heat, or you might get blisters. So the whole message is communicated to you through your fingertips. As Mama Thaam has very clearly said, that at the time of resurrection, your hands will speak. But the Muslims do not want to talk about resurrection at all, 
because they want to frighten people with the doomsday. They don't want to talk about the resurrection time which is going to come, which is the intermediary time, because they want to use the time which will frighten people by saying that now your doomsday is coming. Now your doomsday is coming. So everybody is frightened about God and they think that now we should just wait for our doom. Nothing else is in between. So this is how the Vishuddhi Chakra is a special one. Now Vishuddhi Chakra is, was created on the Saturday. So it is the Saturn, that's the important star of the Vishuddhi Chakra. So whenever the Saturn is at the highest, America will be in a better place to do things. But I don't think they know much about themselves. They don't know what they are, why they are on this earth, what is their work, what they are supposed to do, or what is the purpose of God of creating America. The first job of the Vishuddhi Chakra within us was that when we became human beings, we raised our heads up like that. When you raise your head up like that, you have become a human being in the sense that now there is a new movement in your consciousness. Now the new movement in your consciousness started about 6,000 years back when Shri Krishna came on this earth, that the new movement was that it is the Father. The advent of the Father was celebrated and that's how people developed a kind of a new instrument within themselves called ego. When the brain was lifted like this, you see, it expanded in a pyramidical, it's a pyramid, it became a pyramid. In an animal, the brain is flat and gradually it rises. When the head was raised, when the responsibility was taken of raising the head, the brain started growing in such a way that it became a pyramid. And when it became a pyramid, the attention became a different attention from that of animal. Because when the waves of your consciousness fell on the sides of the pyramid, they went into the parallelogram of forces by which the resultant force, the resultant force, now it falls like this, it goes like that, the resultant force is like that, had two sides. One was this, another was this. So the consciousness, or we can say the attention, instead of going inside, started going out. So one part of the resultant was going outside and that's how when you became a human being, your attention went outside. It's the human beings only who have their attention outside. Not that the animals don't have, but the attention of human beings are such that they create reactions. Like you see something, now I see doctor's house, so for example. Then a reaction starts in my mind. What is this? What does this mean? How much it must have cost? From where did you buy it? Anything you see, it starts giving you a reaction. Not to the animals. Animals at the most, they will say, this I must eat, that I must eat, that I must get. But they do not think about it. It's the, only the human beings who reflect and this reflection comes because of the pyramid-like structure of the brain. And this has a special reaction in the brain itself that we start developing our own ego, our own myths, our own mental projections. And when we develop our own mental projections, this ego starts developing, I know what's wrong, all these nonsensical things come. And once that starts working out, the balloon of the ego starts rising. It starts pushing the other balloon which was within us is of the superego as an animal and then it comes up in the scent. That's how we now become normal human beings. But then we start increasing our ego. It starts overlapping the super ego and a calci calcification takes place by which we develop our I-ness. 
So it is all the happening that takes place after we have lifted our head, raised our head and we are no more like animals. So Vishuddhi Chakra has a very big part to play in the human evolution that by developing your Vishuddhi Chakra, you have become human beings, first of all. Secondly, because it is the chakra of the father who becomes again the primordial, as you call it in uh, uh, macrocosm, you become the macrocosm. You are the microcosm and the father is the macrocosm. So you become that because of the Vishuddhi Chakra, which is governed by Sri Krishna, who becomes that microcosm called as Virat. In the brain it is expressed in this part, in this part of the head. It is here that you start the manifesting your macrocosm qualities at this point. Now this Vishuddhi Chakra has a speciality, is that we always say the responsibility on my shoulders. Always we say the responsibilities are on my shoulders. The reason is the Vishuddhi Chakra gives you the sense of responsibility. And that's why you know the Americans feel responsible for the old world. Naturally. <laughs> it's perfectly understood that they feel responsible for the whole world. But how much they are aware of their role as the responsible people, that's a different one. But they feel they are responsible, but their role as responsible people, if they understand that they have to be ideals, ideals, because a person who is the responsible person in a family has to be the ideal for others. It started very well, I should say, at the time of Abraham Lincoln, it started very well. When you started talking about democracy, is also, democracy is nothing but collectivity. He started talking about collectivity of the people, by the people. All that shows that the sense of collectivity started coming right in this Vishuddhi But then, the people, who are in the center can only remain normal. But those who bend too much or who bend backward too much <coughs> both suffer from problems. The ones who bend forward to others are the people who get their super ego, uh, they get over humbled down like developing countries are. And those who bend backward are the people who try to dominate others who have ego. So, because of certain blessings of God, they discovered so many things, the ego started developing in America too much. But ego is like a balloon, as I told you, and keeps you floating in the air. And when you are in the air, you become shallow people. You have no moorings. But it has one more advantage. If you are floating in the air, you can have a complete comprehensive view, complete vision of the whole. If your eyes are pure and your intentions are clear cut. Now the another thing that happened by their coming here was the problem that they felt that we are a very new nation. It has an advantage as well as it has a disadvantage. The advantage is that if you are new, it's very good because you can be transformed into something better very easily because there is no conditioning in your mind. You are very clean, absolutely ready to become something better. Or else can be possibility that you are so new that you are awed by everything that is old, which is very true about Americans, 
and they bought all the old uh, bridges from England to bring them yeah, down here. And the crane is about the old, it's too much here. And that as if whatever is new is all absurd. So maybe even Sahaja Yoga may be an absurd thing for them, because according to them this is something new. Because they are new nations, they have started discarding all that is new. It's an absurd thing. Now we must say that Sahaja Yoga as it is today is the most ancient thing. It started with the universe. And now the culmination point has come because it is a living process. As you see a flower on the tree, it says first new flower. But the flower has come out of a seed which has got the roots, then it became the trunk, then it became the leaves and then it has now become a flower. So though it looks a new flower, it has a big heritage. In the same way, Sahaja Yoga is as ancient as this universe is. But to people who have such a hankering for traditionalism, find it difficult to find out what is real tradition. Only those who are traditional people can know what is real tradition. Last time I came here in America and I was shocked that a person came to interview me. And when he was talking, he asked about one gentleman who was most untraditional from Indian point of view. His name was Ramakrishna Paramahansa. He married a woman and made her a mother. I mean, it's, nobody has done it. Rama has not done it, Krishna has not done it. It's an absurd stuff. But for them, he was the most traditional man. And he told me that, Mother, your Sahaja Yoga is not traditional if you don't believe in Ramakrishna. Last 50, 60 years, all such neo-traditional people came up. Another one was this uh, Pondicherry fellow. Another absurd situation. He called this woman a mother and his relation with her is ambiguous. You don't know what relationship they have. I mean, that is something in Indian tradition is an impossible situation. You have to have clear-cut relationship with everyone. You cannot have ambiguous. Neither a friend, nor a wife, nor a mother, or a sister. That kind of a situation is most untraditional. It's never thought of. I mean, you Indians can know this is not possible. This is an absurd situation. But for some people, it is traditional. What happened about 60 years back, I think about the time of my birth, only the negativity started taking a new form. In understanding the Western confusion, they are all Westerners, if you see them. And the Western confusion, they took over for their own advantages. They used it for their own advantages. And this is where the Western people have failed to make them out. The other day, at the Jungian place, I was to talk to you people, with Sahaja Yoga and you. Now, you, I came to know only when he died because there was a little article about it. I never studied psychology. Of course, I tried to learn some vocabulary to talk to them. Sometimes I thought I may have to talk to them also. But these Yugians all very intellectual, some great people sitting before me, you see. I've out heard of them, the president of American Yugian society. I just went through a book just before starting it and I saw some diagrams which really puzzled the first conception they had, of course it's all mental conception of you. I don't blame him because he got realization, but he did not know how the stage was created, was with the framework of the stage. And his movement was still of a seeker to find out how he got his realization. And all movements were linear. They were not expanding from one point all over, so it was not so integrated. Now the thing they showed was, that at the bottom of it was the unconscious, which is never going to be conscious. On top of the board, that was the conscious, uh, unconscious that can be conscious. Then there was subconscious and on top of that was the ego. I mean, what a mess of a thing it was. I told them, see, now the word unconscious itself in confusing. What do you mean by unconscious? Whatever you don't feel on your central nervous system is unconscious, all right. But what does that mean? We don't feel the 
subconscious, then subconscious is also unconscious. Whatever we don't feel, for example, there are certain sounds. We don't hear everything. So, all that is unconscious. Means it's a mixed bag. All sorts of things mixed up together. But God is not a hodgepodge person. See, he is a clear conjunctive one. He knows what he's doing. He's the greatest organizer. And how can you put you into a bag like that? That the unconscious is below, then on top of is is the unconscious that is going to be conscious. On top of it is the subconscious. On top of the consciousness. On top of that you go. So you go down, carrying all this inside you. Where do you go? And how do you go? So the first mistake was that there are layers one on top of another. So they are placed vertically. The ego is on the right hand side and super ego on the left hand side. The future on the right hand side and the past on the left hand side. So the subconscious on the left hand side and the supraconscious on the right hand side. And the central path is kept clear cut. I mean in any organization, say if you go to the airport, you have like this that you have to pass through the walls to go to the airplane. If we human beings don't commit such horrible mistakes, how can God commit such a mistake? So it was absolutely wrong to think that way. So the central path is in the center, while the right side is on the right side and left side on the left side. And you don't have to go to the subconscious at all. Because they justified all these people who are trying to make them hypnosis or they are trying to hypnotize them or to give them a new type of a... Uh, sort of an experience, all that was unconscious, we should accept. Even some people, if they start suddenly jumping, they are always great. So the sensations that you get from the subconscious and the supraconscious were accepted as something. It, it was a confusion of your intellectuals, I should say, completely. But it is not so. Your path is straight forward. Absolutely, for Kundalini, only thing, the one who has to raise it had to come, that's all. But otherwise it's all very well and there is no need for you to get into that horrible subconscious. When I told them they were amazed, they said, Mother, it is so simple. I said, it's very simple. Your unconscious is divided into four. One is the collective subconscious. One is the su collective supraconscious. One is, you can say, the collective hell. And on top is the super collective consciousness. So where do we have to go? We should know our destination. Then we have to reach. And that is how the problem of all these people getting entangled with Muktanan. Yes, they ask me a question, what's wrong with Muktanan? What is, why is so dangerous? One lady poor thing that Serge would have it, she came, she said, Oh, I went there, I broke my back and I'm finished. I said, oh, such a dangerous man. He flattered me, I went there and I don't know what has happened to my back, I can't sit for more than 10 minutes in one place, I have to get up. And I have a vibrator, I have to always put it like that. So I said, see, the danger. Then the another theory they started that we must suffer if you have to go to God. Why? I mean, that's not God's idea by any time. Why should you suffer? He made Christ suffer for you. Finish now, no, you better not suffer. There's no need to suffer at all. So all these ideas penetrated into these Western people. And these mental projections are accepted without even understanding what is written in other books we should see. And they could only go as far as those 60 years where these horrible people who went to India, very shallow people, they saw some of these tantric books because they wanted to justify Freud through Indian culture. So they got the tantric erotic things and all that and brought these books and some of them read, I don't know what books to say that Kundalini in the stomach, somebody says in the brain. I mean, they don't know where the Kundalini is and there are such big, big books. Can you imagine? Such big, big books are written. Now, when the books are written, we, it, every book is not a scripture. But to them, if it is written in the book, you see, it's a scripture. And that's how the whole confusion started going on. So these people came down to full advantage of it. And now they have become great gurus with a lot of money. 
rich people. But now as the hand of God is great, one by one, they are getting out of the heads of these people. And now I hope a day will come when people will see the light. So the task of Sahaja Yoga is to establish the truth within yourself. It is not that we can have a membership. We cannot have a person enrolled into it. We cannot call them as a branded Sahaja Yogis. It's the growth of the person that is to be seen. Now there are so many lectures which I have given about Ritambara Pragya and all those things and I think for every Sahaja Yogi it is necessary to listen to those lectures go through it, understand them and to meditate so that you grow. Because it's not a plastic thing that we can create. It's a living process of the living uh, uh, energy of the living God. And so it has to grow. By thinking you cannot make it grow, but by not thinking you allow it to grow more and more. As it starts growing within you, then only you realize that what you are. That's the only way you have to reach a state of that superconsciousness and establish yourself there. Then only you will know what I'm talking about. Now today's puja is another thing. Now what is a puja? People say what's a puja? Is? Actually, yesterday I had a puja, and it's not easy for me to bear the puja. To be very frank, you know, because the vibrations are so much that I don't know. And then I went to the airport two hours, he took out the vibrations and put them for the, all the New York airport. It was necessary to go down. Because vibration starts flowing with tremendous force. And if you people do not absorb it, it takes time for it to ooze out from my body. It makes me rather heavy with it. But then it oozes out, I feel better. And only thing that happens by saying the Mantras, you awaken the deities within yourself and start receiving the vibrations. And when you, your deities are awakened, that awakened through the power of the deities within me, they have to work very hard to do that. And that's how they emit too much vibrations, which must be absorbed by you when your deities are awake. That's how it works. You cannot describe it in words, you cannot tell it in words, it's a happening that has to be done. Many people who come to Sahaja Yoga first can go a little bit like that in the beginning. Gradually they settle down, come round, go into it, then it becomes all. Some people just shoot off in one day and they are there. Makes no difference whatsoever because it's a growing thing and it has to grow. With some people, the if line is so fertile or maybe something that it just works out fast. So nobody should blame anyone and especially one should not feel guilty because that's the should be on the left hand side. Especially for America I am wearing this stone which is called as the black sapphire because this is the stone of Sri Krishna. It's the stone of Vishuddhi Chakra. Every chakra has a stone and this is the stone of the Vishuddhi Chakra so I am wearing this just for coming to America. And I hope that today's uh, worship will bring out the potential of this country by exciting the deities, Sri Krishna himself, who is in charge, by pleasing him, by making him active. And he has great qualities and one of the greatest qualities he has that he has a samhara shakti by which he can kill the demons. And all those demons who are settled down here are really mistaken. Because if this is the place of Sri Krishna, they are very dangerously placed. Because once he's awakened here, they all will be completely finished through his Sudarshan Chakra which he has in his hand. And he can just kill them one by one. But first he is to be pleased and he has to be awakened, he has to be prasanna, that's the word. Prasanna means to be pleased and then it works out. So today first we'll have Ganesha's puja a little bit because Ganesha's puja is meant just to establish 
the innocence, the innocence of the place. Once the innocence is established, that's the most important, that's the essence of everything. Ganesha is the essence. And then we'll have Shri Krishna Puja and then the Puja of the Devi of the power. So that's how we'll have three Pujas one after another, but a short time every time. All right? After that beautiful talk, which so much in it, I'll post it for anybody who wishes to listen to it again. Let us settle down into a meditation and I'll put on a rag. If you wish to finish up, please raise your kundalini, put on a bandhan. Jai Mataji.
Jay Shamaraji. There can be no peace in the world until there is true peace within. I hope you enjoyed this morning's meditation and may you have a peaceful, joyful day. Jay Shamaraji.